If you're from the United States, you're probably familiar with the Gifted and Talented Education Program. The premise was, I think, pretty flawed from the start. There are the normal kids, and then there are the best kids. Already, I think that's a bad dichotomy to put on children. I've read up on some controversies with the GATE program, and it also seems that often the best children tended to have rich parents, because if parents didn't like the school's IQ testing, they could hire an emotional psychologist to consult and test their kid instead. When I was in third grade, they called me into this little room with all of these other third graders and had us take this complete nonsense test. It was logic puzzles and shapes, and we had to find patterns. And I thought I was kind of a bad student at the time, so I was confused about why they picked me for this. I used to get in trouble for reading Animorphs and Goosebumps in class, and like hiding the books inside my textbooks so I could pretend I was paying attention when really I was reading a book. I also got in trouble a lot because my desk was just crammed full of loose papers and garbage, and once a month my teacher would keep me after school and make me dump all the contents of my desk on the floor and tell me to clean it up. And today, I think this was meant to shame me, <laughs> but at the time I assumed that they just made everyone do this and it was just, like, normal. <laughs> Uh, and the year before, in second grade, my teachers begged my parents to get me tested for ADHD uh, because I never finished any of my math tests. I don't think that I had a frame of reference back then for what tasks were important, and I found math very boring, so I mentally opted out of that period by dissociating and pretending that I was the mayor of Halloween Town. And nobody ever got me tested for ADHD, so I always just assumed that I was lazy and a bad student. So when the test came back and they told me that I was smart, I was like, neat. It was on paper that I was a smarty, smarter than everyone else, and I got to be in the smart kids club, where I assumed they'd teach us like, chemistry or rocket science or something. I was so proud of being a gifted and talented kid. And in contrast, there was this other girl in class who also took the test with me. She was... Uh... It was clear that it was really important to her family that she got straight A's, and dressed neatly, and never got in trouble, and won lots of awards and accolades and stuff. I remember the look on her face when we all got our test results back, and I got in, and she didn't. I'm sure, in her mind, I was just this lazy screw who didn't even care about the program and didn't deserve to be there, and she bullied me constantly for the next couple of years. I wonder how she's doing as an adult. <laughs> See, she wasn't even in the gifted program, and it probably messed her up. So, <laughs> they didn't teach us rocket science. They stuck us in a room and had us do Sudoku, which was so close to math that I just noped out and read the stack of logic puzzle books in the corner, which was also kind of like math, but there were no numbers, so I found them pretty easy. I don't like numbers. I can't read them when they're, like, long. Anything over four digits is hard for me to read. I don't know. Sometimes, when we were lucky, we get to go to the computer lab which was a real thing back in, like, 2003, to learn how to do computer things. With, you know, like, real prodigy stuff. <laughs> We'd go to this website called hoagiesgiftededucation.com, which was just links to Flash games. 
and there was one link to Neopets, and that's how I spent most of my time. Now, eventually, they decided that it was time for us to learn about finance, so we went to the library and they lectured us for an hour and a half about taxes, and this would have been really useful for me if I was in high school, but at age 10, the word taxes was enough to send me mentally rocketing straight to Halloween Town, where I could chill with my imaginary friend Sabella from Scooby-Doo and my crush Demetra from Spy Kids, the greatest and coolest movie ever made. Spy Kids 3D, game over. I think- <laughs> I'm kidding. I think that the original aim of a gifted and talented program was to challenge the kids that got bored. And I was bored most of the time, and I liked challenging things, but what the GATE program really did was challenge me to discover how bored I could really get. My best friend sometimes acted really jealous that I was in the smart people club and I had to be like, no, <laughs> it's a dumb people club. Everybody in there is being played for a sucker, especially me. I've heard that in some GATE programs, the kids took like college level classes or something or did fun experiments, but that is straight up not what my program was like. It was like somebody shows up and is like, hey kid, you're special. You're more special than anybody else. Welcome to Hogwarts. And you get to Hogwarts, but it's just like a burned out McDonald's by the highway. The truth was, I learned nothing from the program. All I got was a bunch of complexes and a Neopets account, which I still visit to this day, so that's something, I guess. But how weird, right? Like, they took a bunch of kids and told them that they were smarter than everyone else, took them out of class, and had them hang out in a boiler room with a puzzle or something instead of learning geography. Every ex-gifted and talented kid I've ever met has depression and anxiety now, and like, imposter syndrome. And it makes sense. Like, what kind of wild social experiment is that? Why would they do it? As I grew up, I had a lot of people telling me I was really smart and, like, really talented. And that was nice, but it was said to me in sentences like this. You're so creative, but you're so disorganized. Or, you're incredibly talented, but you don't try. You don't seem to care about anything, which is sad, because you have all these incredible gifts. And I guess I ended up feeling like the only thing that justified my existence was the fact that I stood out. I wrote things and won things, and I was quote-unquote smart. And because I was quote-unquote smart, people put up with all the bad stuff about me. I knew that I couldn't fix those things. I didn't know how to be more organized or how to try. And to this day, I'm not sure what people wanted me to do. Like, my life wasn't a mess because I intended it to be. <laughs> I didn't lose my homework on purpose or forget to do readings because I wanted to screw myself over. I was just so easily bored and so easily distracted. And I didn't know how to change that about myself. I knew that I couldn't. So if people only tolerated me because I was smart, I'd be smarter. If people put up with my flaws because I was creative, I'd be the most creative. I know that's not what they were trying to teach me, but I heard it so many times that's all I took away. I really leaned in hard to being smart and talented. Being mediocre, doing just okay, gave me anxiety. Worse than actually failing at stuff. I needed to be in advanced English and advanced history, and I was okay with being in remedial math because in my mind, I made up for it with being a smart genius <laughs> in other areas. Being average was not okay and not enough. I didn't have to be perfect at everything, just at everything I tried. I never tried and failed. If I thought I might fail, I didn't try. 
because then everyone would see that I wasn't smart. I wasn't smarter than everyone else. I didn't have enough gifts or talents to warrant my blind spots or failures. They'd start to see that I was just average, and all the regular rules applied to me, and I'd be like kicked out or shunned for not being good at anything. I was worried they'd see I was an imposter. I was only ever as good as my accolades and achievements. I don't know when I stopped sharing my creative work with people. I used to share my writing all the time. I used to be proud of stuff that I only had half done. At some point, I realized that my peers weren't that interested in what I had to write. They stopped being impressed by my art and music. And if I wasn't impressing anyone, what was the goddamn point? I stopped sharing my writing, and eventually I just stopped writing altogether. I think my last big creative project in high school was in ninth grade. I was really into Stephen King at that time, so I decided to write a horror adventure novel about an accountant who teams up with a cool vampire to fight the devil, and the devil was on a road trip with his lawyer, and there was a grizzled old vampire hunter who was part of it too. I remember there was a lot of cosmic horror and snappy one-liners, and I thought that they were really cool as a 14-year-old, probably were really cringy. I'd realized that I never had any energy to be creative after school. You go and sit in a room for eight hours and dissociate the entire time. I was still doing this in high school, by the way. Mostly I played out World of Warcraft stories in my head. And then you go home and do homework for another four hours, and I figured I might as well make productive use of some of that time. So I had this little blue notebook I carried around everywhere. I took it to every class. The idea was that people would think I was taking notes, but I was actually writing a novel, and I was paying the exact same amount of attention. <laughs> my grades weren't even slipping or anything. I managed my regular A's in humanities and D pluses in STEM classes, and I had something fun to do during school hours, which to me, again, felt mostly like I was just passively waiting for the day to end. Obviously, after about a month, my teachers caught on and called me into a disciplinary meeting where they told me I wasn't allowed to write during class anymore. Duh. <laughs> but they were kind of like bemused about it. They weren't angry at me. They liked me for this. They kind of patted me on the back and laughed and were like, save the novel writing for home. And honestly, that wasn't helpful to me. Because I felt, again, like I'd been excused from discipline because I was quote-unquote smart. Again, people were tolerating my bad side because I was gifted. I'm not sure what I wish my parents and teachers and the adults in my life would have done differently with me. I guess it would have been nice to, like, have somebody sit down with me as a second grader when they first noticed my problems and teach me coping strategies, instead of just telling me to be more organized or write things down or pay attention, because I truly, honestly didn't have any strategies to do those things. Instead, I just developed crippling lifelong anxiety, which is not a good alternative. I always found loopholes. I gained work ethic strategies that absolutely would not work for most people and barely work for me. I was the kid who scoffed when a teacher was like, you cannot write this essay in one night, because I knew I could and always did. And what's more, I knew I had no idea how to stagger my work anyways. If I did a little bit every day, like they said, I just lose my place and forget my progress. I'm glad for the teachers who encouraged my creativity. I had this great sixth grade science teacher who let me write the school musical and encouraged these weekly little sci-fi stories I wrote for his class. Even though I got a D minus in his class, 
He didn't let me get away with ignoring the assignments in favor of updating the weekly little episodic zine I did, but he did reward me for the hard work I put in, and I'm glad for him, and I wish that they'd all been like that. I didn't start writing again until college. I wrote a pretty shitty novel, and I gave it to a friend to read, and he told me it was only mediocre and that I should keep writing, so I quit again, because if I couldn't impress people, if I was only mediocre, what was the point? I took college creative writing classes, which brought out a very competitive side in me. I needed to be the best one in class. My biggest source of anxiety was reading other students' writing. I hated it when they were better than me, and I hated it more when they were bad. Because if there could be bad writers in a creative writing program, there was absolutely nothing official distinguishing them from me. There was no gifted and talented program in college writing. I felt so uneasy about it, just absolutely desperate to distinguish myself somehow so that everyone saw me as better again, so that I could justify to myself everything else. Justify occupying that space, justify spending money, justify getting a D in anthropology, justify my sense of entitlement. School doesn't prepare you for stuff. In the real world, it's more important to do something than to do it well. Nobody cares about your talents if you can't do stuff in the first place. And it's those early skills that I really needed help with that still bite me in the ass today. Organization, remembering stuff that's not directly in front of me, prioritizing things. I've been applying to PhD programs and I'm not sure why. I guess I just feel safer thinking about that title, that piece of paper that tells people I'm special, that safety net that excuses my shortcomings. Logically, I know it's stupid, but I know it's going to put me deep in the hole financially, and probably it's not even a good use of my time. But to this day, I feel like I need something official on paper to justify me. And that's why it's so scary to me when you guys like my stuff and watch my videos and comment and support my Patreon. That's not a kind of attention that I'm used to receiving. I guess deep down, I'm terrified of the but. But you're lazy. When I see you get all excited about a new video, there's some unconscious part of me that's waiting for the but you're disorganized, but you don't try, but you're forgetful, but you're a bad student, but you're a bad person. What will you think of me when you see that I'm not good? What will you say about me when I don't upload? When I forget to do monthly stuff for patrons, when I neglect my responsibilities, when I neglect my fans, when I drift out of focus and lapse into depression or just go radio silent without any kind of excuse? What sort of things will you say when I'm flaky, when I screw up, when I'm not up to par, when the bad stuff comes out, when I show you the stuff that people don't like about me, when I'm frustrating? I started this channel for fun because I wanted to show you something fun. I wanted to share what I think is fun. I guess I didn't realize how scary it is to be seen, how scary it is to put myself in a position where I can fail, fail at something that I tried at, fail at something that I care about. I guess I've been quiet lately because I just want to do a good job, and that's something I'm still learning how to do maybe for the first time. I've been creating content, I just haven't been publishing it, because I love creating content. I amuse myself, honestly, and I've always thought that that's really enough for me. 
on some level. On another level, it's absolutely not. I do need the approval of others, but that's not why I make the videos. And I guess that's what's scary about sharing these, because it's part of me. It's, I'm vulnerable, I'm having fun, and I guess I'm afraid of somebody taking that away from me. I don't know what kind of complex this is, but it's something. <laughs> I just want you to know that those of you who have stuck with me are amazing. You deserve the world, and I'll do my best to deliver. If you are a gifted and talented kid, or not a gifted and talented kid, or if you had ADHD or imposter syndrome, or if you relate to any of this, post about it in the comments. I'm very interested to see what you have to say. Special thank you to my wonderful, glorious patrons, Nulstalat, Roni, Yenchi, Square Wave, and Special Spoon. Take care of yourself, love yourself, and be gentle with yourself. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next video. sister that I would be recording ASMR in here, and she immediately went downstairs to start playing the piano, so... because this is how I grew up. It's pretty much going on 24-7 around here. Okay, now she's gonna start eating food.